Photochemistry is the study of the interaction of light with molecules and it is of huge importance in the world because sunlight is the giver of life uh, on this planet. All food ultimately comes from uh, the action of uh, sunlight on green plants which turns uh, carbon dioxide and water into carbohydrate which is the ultimate food of all, all species. Um, <clears throat> the fact that we can see is due to photochemical reactions which occur on the eye. So what we need to understand is how does light interact with molecules? So we need to think about the structure of molecules, uh, even simple molecules. They, <clears throat> they are joined together by the sharing uh, or donating of electrons which, which act in pairs. Now quantum mechanics, mechanics tells us that you cannot have two electrons in the same region of space unless they have another property which is different one from the other. And that property is electron spin. The electron spins on its axis and so creates a magnetic field. And you can't have two electrons in the same physical region of space unless the magnetic field of one cancels out the magnetic field of the other. And we call that a singlet state. When light of the correct energy comes along, you move one of those electrons from one region of space, one orbital as we call it, to another region of space, a different orbital, so now the constraints of what we call the Pauli exclusion principle no longer apply. There's no reason for the two electrons to have opposing spins, so they cancel out the magnetic fields. In the process of taking an electron from one orbital to another, there's nothing in that process which changes the spin. So the first thing that happens is you get what is called an excited electronic state. The electron has a huge amount of excess energy which it needs to, to get rid of, but it still has the same spin arrangement as it had before. But now, because the electrons are in different orbitals, you can change the spin of one of the electrons. So now both electrons have the same spin sense, the magnetic fields reinforce one another rather than cancel each other out, and so the, mo the molecule as a whole behaves as a small magnet and we call that a triplet state in, in most molecules. Now a triplet state, in order for that to relax back down to the ground state, you have to have a spin inversion process again and that's inherently unlikely. So a triplet state hangs around, lives for quite a long time, anywhere between um, milliseconds uh, to shorter. Whereas an excited singlet state, the electron can jump straight away back down to where it came from. So singlet states are indeed very short-lived uh, with a natural lifetime of the order of nanoseconds, 10 to the minus 9 of a second. And that difference in lifetime often dictates what happens to a molecule when you excite it. So, what are the fates of an excited singlet state to start with? It can drop back down to the state from which it started, the ground state, and it can give back out the light that it absorbed. But it always loses a little bit of energy. So the, the fluorescence, so-called, is always at longer wavelengths than the light which is absorbed. Uh, and that can be of, of, of great importance. That's true in molecules. In atoms, you get the same radiation frequency, you get the same uh, wavelength of light in absorption as in emission. But in molecules, you lose energy. The molecule can interact with other molecules and donate an electron or just donate its energy. So you have electron transfer processes and energy transfer process processes, and these can occur from both the singlet state and the triplet state excited. The molecule can fall apart, it can fragment. Uh, you may have weakened one of the bonds and so you get two fragments or it can react with other molecules which it collides with. Uh, many different fates. 
and, the, and photochemistry really is the study of the rates of these processes, what happens in some molecules, and a rationalization of why you get different behaviors. Some molecules fluoresce extremely strongly, which is very useful in some dye stuffs, very useful in, in biology as, uh, as fluorescent probes in microscopy, for example. Whereas other molecules don't fluoresce at all, they don't seem to do anything. They just go back to the ground state and produce heat. So you, uh, you have a, a very expensive Bunsen burner, if you like, in, in that case. It's, it's not very interesting. Uh, the triplet state is long-lived enough that it can interact with other molecules very, very readily. So, uh, the uh, photochemistry is really the study of the fates of photoexcited uh, molecules. Uh, it was an empirical process for an emp empirical study through the 1930s, but the development of quantum theory really allowed us to make rationalizations about the rates of various processes. For example, um, the transfer of an electron from the ground state of a molecule to, an, to uh, another orbital where you produce an excited state is subject to selection rules which are dictated by quantum mechanics. Um, the, for a, a, a transition which is fully allowed, both spatially and due to the, the spin of the electron, then you have a very, very powerful uh, absorption process uh, such that, and obviously you would use something of that nature as a dye because you want to have maximum color effects. You have a dye if the absorption is in the visible part of the spectrum, so you're taking away some of the colors of the rainbow and leaving the others. Uh, and, and the dyes usually have these very, very strong transitions. To change the spin of an electron during that process of absorption is extremely difficult. So you have a factor of something like uh, 100,000 less intensity in that absorption. It's very hard to see it. You can if you use special circumstances. And there are all sorts of other kind of minor uh, restrictions. So the maximum uh, you can have is uh, a, a, a very powerful absorption in some dye stuffs. The minimum can be where you're changing, trying to change the spin of the electron, uh, and that can be extremely weak. The fate of the excited singlet state that you produce upon absorption really depends on those quantum mechanical rules as well. If the transition is easy, if it was easy to go up, it's easy to come back down. And so those molecules you would expect to be extremely fluorescent, very strongly fluorescent, uh, and we can make use of, of those properties. Uh, if uh, there is something in the molecule which enhances the spin change to form the triplet state, the electron inverts, one of the electrons inverts its spin, then you're left with a long-lived state. It won't drop down to the ground state and give out light. It can in some circumstances. That's called a phosphorescence. Uh, but usually it hangs around and interacts with the environment. And one of the important interactions can be with simple molecules which are uh, adjacent to the excited state. So an energy transfer process, for, for example, from the triplet state uh, to molecular oxygen, which very unusually is itself a triplet state, although it's in the lowest energy state, it's a triplet, has, has unpaired electrons. And that produces then a singlet state of oxygen. You swap the energies, swap one of the electrons, produce uh, a singlet state, which is higher in energy than the ground state oxygen, and that is an extraordinarily reactive species. That will react with just about anything around it and cause damage, degradation, uh, and uh, polymers, for example, degrade readily under the action of sunlight through a mechanism associated with that. We can make use of 
the singlet oxygen, which is produced in such a, a process, and indeed in electron transfer processes, to do a whole variety of chemical things, but we can also do biological things with them. Uh, plants, in fact, have a defense mechanism against producing uh, singlet oxygen, which would destroy the, the, the chloro chlorophyll which is used for driving the photosynthetic process. They have a, a, a triplet state scavenger, which takes away the, uh, the um, excited triplet state before it can interact with oxygen, so it, it preserves itself. But we can use this phenomenon to actually inflict damage on tissue, on human tissue, and that leads us to a discussion on uh, the parameters which influence that, and we call that process photodynamic therapy.